Uh, we're just glad for you to be here tonight. Uh, thank you for making that. Uh, I didn't go ahead. I didn't announce. Seniors of faith. Amen. It's on Facebook. It's on Facebook. We might be posted on Facebook. Seniors of faith. Seniors of faith. I saw Sister Elaine walking around handing out some, some reminders. This coming Tuesday at 10:30. This coming Tuesday, June the 22nd, uh, at 1030, the Seniors of Faith will be meeting. Uh, they would love to have you meet here in the kitchen. Uh, that's welcome. Anybody there, they can come to meet with them. They'd love to have you. They have a uh, Bible study. They do games. Uh, they eat, so they have a great time in the Lord. So come and be with them, if you will. Amen. Uh, yeah, I think that's all my announcements. Now, i got them all covered. Amen. But it's good to see you in the house of the Lord. If you're able to, let's stand up all over the house, and we're going to pray. Um, also, I want, I want I don't know who this They asked me, to, to, did anybody know who this is? That's your nanny. You think it's him? Okay. They went like, they were just trying to figure out. They, they, I live a little drain of money. First thing a preacher does, you know, is he Anyway, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. We're glad you're here. We're glad Brother Chris is here to bring the word tonight. Let's go to the Lord in prayer together before we get started. Father, we come before you tonight in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for the privilege to be in your house tonight. Lord, to sing praises unto you, to come together as the body of Christ, Lord, and as we uh, are just thankful for our youth that are here tonight, we just ask for your anointing on them as they sing and they play and anoint Brother Chris as he breaks the bread of life, God. We just thank you, Lord. For your many blessings on us, have your way in this service tonight, and we we'll give it all to you in the name of Jesus. And everybody say it. Amen. Amen. And amen. As a matter of fact, y'all can sit back down. Amen. I'm going to turn it over to Sister Nick. Or you got it. You want to say anything before she's done? I, mean, um, I would like to ask you all to be praying, um, congregation, be praying over our retreat that we're going on. Um, this is always a very special time that we go on, and, and I was praying earlier uh, in the year about what, what we should focus on. As I was praying, the word awakening kept coming to my mind. It, it, just, it just would not go away, that word awakening. And so I had messaged Pastor Zach and Brother Tyler that were going to be speaking and told them about that word. And that, that was, I felt, what the focus was supposed to be about. And as soon as I did, Brother Tyler sent out a message back. And he said, Sister, we had a prophetic word go out of our church the night before that if you would pray 
preach now is a, is a ministry that we start. I don't want really to get the story away, but I was a, I was the class clown. I was the idiot in school. I, and and I, I'm ashamed of this, but I, if somebody said, take this and make you high, give me two of them. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know? And, uh, and, I, and I ended up barely graduating from high school. And I, my parents said, you're going to go to college, you're going to join the military, or you're going to get a job. I didn't, do, I didn't want to do none of the above. I was sorry, too. I was a sorry rascal. Fortunately, my dad did well financially, and he, he, and he, he came from nothing, man. I mean, he didn't have nothing, but he worked his way up and got, got made something out of his life, and I, I was one of those spoiled idiots. I was an idiot, that's right. And I'm ashamed of that. I, I, I wish I could go back and do it all over again, but Jesus wiped me clean, man. Amen. He wiped the slate clean. Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. So uh, I, I went to college my first semester at Florida State. I don't even know how I got into Florida State. I think the counselor had dyslexia, got the test score. <laughs> I didn't even, I didn't even, the SAT score was, was under 700. I mean, that's horrible. I mean, you, you can close your eyes now. And Christmas tree knew better than I did, you know. Y'all know what Christmas tree is, you know? Okay, I thought so. I did that when I was in school, too. I believe But uh, I, my first semester, I made three S's and D. The second semester, I made three S and an F. That's four S. I can count that high. And uh, anyway, I got kicked out of college. And, Right about that time, I, had got, I got pulled over passing the school bus, leaving the scene of an accident, DUI. Man, they, they, they had to make new names for tickets I was getting, you know what I mean? Uh, I got arrested. I got caught for shot with the dude. And I, once again, I was an idiot. And I'm, I, I, when the devil's on your life, you will be an idiot because he's an idiot. Amen. Right. I was just down in Puerto Rico preaching. They said, loco, Diablo, loco. And then, y'all know what Diablo is? Thank you. Say, there we go. He is loco. And he had new locos, too. And I was smoking that loco weed. Amen. And left hand is cigarette. Anyway. Y'all, that brought me down. Some of y'all was smoking the <laughs> Genesis 
22, verse 5. It's the first time the word worship is mentioned in the Bible. I don't know. I didn't intend to do this, but this is coming out of this. So you better grab it. It's the first time the word worship is mentioned in the Bible. That. And it's the story of Abraham going up on the mountain. You know, they didn't. They went to chapter 22. You mentioned the word worship. Well, worship is obedience. Amen. You shall worship the Lord with all your heart. You shall obey the Lord. I think you can tra translate those words the same. Worship and obedience. In fact, what happened? What happened in Genesis? Don't eat from that tree. They disobeyed. God! And they obeyed Satan. They were Satan worshippers. Because they obeyed Satan. That's right. And that's what God said this whole spirit of man is in the first place. That's what sin entered in, amen? Right. And I can take off on that, but I'll let you finish that one. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, so I thought, you know, like I told my daughter, you know, now that, that was kind of a made up story. But, but I want you to get the point. She, she keeps telling me she loves me. I can't get a good shit. She don't really love me. So worship is more than just saying I love you. Worship is doing what I say. Amen. 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 And Jesus said that repeatedly, I think, in, in uh, John chapter 16. So anyway, I got born again. Uh, I got back into college. Nobody in my family ever been to college. I didn't have a cousin in the college. And after that, my sister went to college. Then I, I had a cousin who went to college. She said, your choices and your decisions will affect other people. Yeah. So get that in the school. We can't talk about Jesus in the public school, but we can talk about biblical principles. I, I tell people, I give them scriptures, I just don't tell them where I'm getting them from. Biblical principles, amen? I'm going to give you a couple of them. But um, I, I ended up graduating from Florida State. I ended up going straight to Bible school. I moved straight to Tulsa, Oklahoma. I was actually out there for a meeting, and I stayed out there. And uh, I, I came home, got my clothes packed up, went out there for two years. And I'm a country boy out in the middle of nowhere, you know, Swanee County. I never been, I don't think I ever been west of the Alabama line. And, you know, moving out there, that was a big deal. We uh, we graduated in two years, came back, became a youth pastor at the church, was there 17 years. And uh, and you need to read the book. It's a pretty amazing story how we got into doing what we're doing. <coughs> we were actually in a school in a, uh, in, uh, in, in Liverpool, England. We were in a school, we got to go in there and share the gospel. They let us share the gospel. And, and lots of kids got to say, and one of the young ladies in my church, she said, we get back to Florida, we got to do this. I said, honey, it's against the law to do what we just did to stay the part. And she said, isn't there something we can do? And that vision. The Bible says to write the vision down. I'm back at two, two, three, four. Write the vision down. Make it plain so those who read it can run with it. But it is for an appointed time. Though it carry wait for it, for it will come. Because if you don't know what God's plan is, I don't care if you're 97 years old. We was looking online today. He was saying some of my old people. There was a woman. She was 114. If she got to figure out now. I don't know. You better get to work. Hallelujah. If she got me. If she count the days down. 114. Woo. Hallelujah. That's that's up there, baby. But uh, we, we 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 started this ministry. We we moved up here. I remember uh, one of my family members told me my kids are going to start today. So I quit my job because we've been on staff in church. I pastored the church in Mayo for a few years as an interim pastor. But we left there in 2004 because we the, we started doing these schools and just started popping up. Come to a school. Come to a school. We were running around. I was using a uh, I had a, a old hay truck hauling equipment around. And finally, we got a closed in truck. And, you know, you go get this, you go get that. You're borrowing this. And, and the ministry just began to grow. Then we moved to Valdosta in 2005, and the ministry just took off. It just really took off. But we decided to name the ministry Future Now. Future Now is based on Jeremiah 29 11. I can't go throw scriptures around in public school, so I want to have a scriptural name. So uh, Jeremiah 29 11 says, For I know the plans for you, declares the Lord, to give you a future and a hope. And, and Jesus, I always tell these young people, uh, at the night of it, if Jesus knows the plan, and you, if God knows the plan, you need to get to God as fast as you can. Amen. And my Bible says in John 14 and 6 that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. Right. Amen. 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 I was talking to a guy today. He was just asking me, he said, Chris, what about these young people? They just think, they, they, don't, they think they're missing out on life if they don't get to do this or they don't get to do that. I said, you ain't missing out on nothing. You're going to miss out on hell when you go with Jesus. Amen. 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 And then God, I heard a story one time. This guy told me this girl was talking to this other girl. This girl was making fun of her. She said, "You never had sex with a boy, you don't, man. You don't know what you miss. You don't know what you miss." And the girl finally looked. She said, "You know what? I can become like you in five minutes, but you'll never be like me." Amen.
second in high school, but the first, my junior reunion, we got there. And my brother, we've been to some of these Carmen cons. Remember Carmen? You know, he just passed away. And uh, we used to, I, they used to, I we used to get soundtracks. I'd sing in church. I'd sing some of them songs. And my brother brought the soundtrack. He walked up to the DJ. They're playing.
making apple pie. You, you, you working at McDonald's, you be making apple pies on the McDonald's, amen? If you find out what you love to do, and it, it, it's in there, it's a gift. There's a, I have another scripture. Well, Proverbs 18, 16 says, your gift will make room for you, bring you for great people. I tell these kids, there's a gift in me I didn't even know I had, and it brought me to here today. There's greatness in me. Yeah. There's greatness in every one of you tonight. Because yeah. God, God created you. This spirit lives in you. The same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead lives in you and will quicken your mortal body. Amen. 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 So, um, oh, thank you, Lord. The vision is for an appointed time. I had a, a ninth grade English teacher. Her name was Shirley Albright. And one day she looked at me, and I was a knucklehead. We're in the ninth grade, that's before Christ. Amen. Brother Corey, you know what I'm talking about. I heard some stories about him. I'm like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> 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 he heard some, he, 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 don't talk to him. He might tell some stories about me anyway. So we, uh, she said, you, you're a great communicator. I'm like, what is a communicator? <laughs> and I just shut her down. And I, 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 I once again, I barely graduated from high school. But one day I was in a public, and I saw Miss Albert. I walked over her and I looked at her and I said, I owe you an apology. Try to help. You saw something in me that needed to be developed, and I didn't even know what it was. I shut you down. And she said, Chris, you, you were, you, I, I just saw the picture. You were a leader. You were a natural. You were just great with people. You were a people person. I just saw that. And I said, man, I wish, I wish you got a hold of me. And she, she supports my ministry today. She wrote a poem for my book. She wrote a little endorsement for my book. It meant, it meant a lot to me. And you know, everybody all had a teacher when you were in school that just, it was something about her. I liked her. She, she, she took the time with me. I was a knucklehead. You know, you probably were like that a little bit too. And there was a few teachers in your life that they stand out. They, and then, listen, you go know, the education system's gone bad. Man, it's like a restaurant. The food's still the same. It's the time to tell it's got bad. And I tell these principals and the teachers, y'all ain't got student problems. I got parent problems. Amen. That problem's coming from the house. They all messed up, drugged up, beat down. Oh, uh, and the schoolhouse is now, the, the, they're the police station, they're the health department, Amen. they're Goodwill, they're the Salvation Army, right. they're having to hand out medicine, they're having to feed the kids. On, you know, they ain't just teaching school. I must have some kids back there, so I'm shocked. <laughs> hey, they overworked and underpaid. Yep. They're yeah. people yeah. find, they need to find a place to get new teachers. And I'm telling you, it's the same restaurant that's been, and it's all, it's good food. Amen. You know, yeah. you got you to be hungry to eat, amen? Amen. Uh-uh. He said, he said, he said, he said, he just got his hunt dog would eat wall cabbage. He said, your hunt dog would eat wall cabbage? He said, you only feed him every three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> you eat wall cabbage too. Rotten wall cabbage. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want, I, want, I want you to see something, especially these young people. This is interesting. In Luke 2, chapter, uh, in Luke chapter 2, verse 41, Jesus is, is uh, it says here, you know, that was when they, uh, it was at the feast. They took the kids to the feast. Uh, they took the whole family there. They went to Jerusalem. And it says, His parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when the twelve, and, and he was twelve years old. Everybody say twelve. Twelve. This is crazy. Jesus was twelve years old. They went to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. When they had finished the days as they returned, the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem. A twelve year old. Now, now, don't you understand something? Yeah, he was Jesus. He was a man. Jesus was a man. But if Jesus was God, then it didn't really mean anything. Jesus had to become a man to get back on a man walk. The Bible calls Jesus the second Adam. Right. Jesus had to. In fact, what happened up there on that mountain? When Abraham went to stab that knife out of Isaac? And, they, and he, he's going, he's going to do it. He, the, now, the gospel was preached to Abraham. I struggled with that for a long time. I said, ain't no way. I got something. I ain't, ain't going to ever kill for something. For nobody. But the Bible says that the, the gospel was preached to Abraham beforehand. And he, he says that we'd be in the lab of return. He believed he was going to get raised from the dead. Uh -huh. It says, I think, somewhere in Galatians. Anyway, he's getting ready to stab. And I said, stop. He said, because you have not been held your son, your only begotten son. Have you heard that somewhere before? Uh -huh. He said, out of your seeds don't come to Promised one. And he's going to defeat the enemies that they get. Glory be to God. And he did. I'm going to tell you, it went down. Abraham, he's the man, son. It went down. I'm telling you. And God said, okay, I 
I found me a man that was willing to give his son, now I can send my son. And the devil thought he won when he killed Jesus. He just played right into, played right into God's hand. Hallelujah. He thought he was defeating the Son of God. But Jesus became a man. He had to come through the birth canal. He had to be born of a woman. He was born of a woman. Somebody say amen. amen. And he was 12 years old. Now you understand, he was a man, so he's just like you when he was 12 years old. <laughs> he's probably down under the seat, chewing gum, picking gum off the chair or something. Right? And when the 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem, and when they had finished the day, they returned the boy and laid it behind the Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother did not know it. But happening, but supposing him to have been in the cup, they went a day's journey. They went a whole day. They saw him among their relatives and acquaintances. So when they could not find him, they returned to Jerusalem seeking him. They went back. And my mom would have beat my mind. She would have beat me three days from Sunday. My God, she would beat me. Anyway, and she, after my daddy got there, she would beat me some more. And so when they did not find him, they returned back. And they said, now it was not that three days they found him in the temple. And here, listen. Because I heard somebody misquote this. They said he was, he was teaching or he was talking to them. No, he was listening and he was asking questions. Now, they were, they, were, they, were, they were profoundly affected by the questions he was asking. And it says they were like, well, this kid's got some wisdom. But he said, after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. He was growing up, and he was growing up spiritually. He was growing up physically, but he's also growing up spiritually. And so we leave that out. We want our kids to grow up and be strong and, and make sure you read a lot and learn and be good in school. But what about spiritually? You stick them on the back of the church and hope they get it. No, you got to do it on purpose. Amen. I appreciate Nikki. What all the stuff she's doing, taking these kids places and doing things. We, 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 don't, we don't give the children a vaccine. Amen? Amen. Amen. Folks, I know some adults that would probably still be in kindergarten who's having a spiritual I ain't, I ain't talking about this church, though. Okay? All right. I met some Christians that was way older than me. They must have just got saved last week, but they don't know much. You know what I mean? And they ain't know that it's about living a lot. So he says, I won't get a good offer now. Hallelujah. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. So when they saw him, they were amazed. And his, and his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. The Bible said, don't be anxious about anything, but I guess when you lose your son, that's part of the little opportunity. He, he said to them, why did you seek me? Did you not know I must be about my father's business? Now, I'm going to tell you what, if I told you I'd say that, I'd probably back up and say, go for it, baby. Go for it. Hallelujah. <laughs> but they did not understand the statement which he spoke. It kind of, wow. <laughs> then he went down with them, to, and they, they came to the house, and he was subject to them. He was a good child. Says he was subject to his parents. But his mother kept all these things in her heart. And in, in, in verse 52, I love this verse. Uh, uh, it's uh, Luke 2 52. Remember that. Luke 2 52. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Folks, as a child of God, we need to be in favor with God and we need to be in favor with man. Vertical and horizontal. Amen. It's in favor of God. God wants to bless you, God wants to prosper you. Amen. In fact, he's already paid the price. You might as well go ahead and cash in. Amen? Amen. Let God bless you. Ask him. Seek him. Everything that pertains in God, the God, the life of God, that he knows, he understands. The Holy Spirit will make you look smart. You'll just listen to it. Somebody say, Amen. Oh. Amen. And then the next time we see Jesus, you know, I was thinking, there was, a, there was another, I was thinking about scripture. I think it's in, in Jeremiah chapter, this is Jeremiah 1, where he's talking about uh, the word of the Lord came to him, and he prophesied over it. Uh, over. Josiah was one of the ones. And Josiah became king. He was eight years old. That's a little scary. I mean, think about that. I mean, well, they were more mature back then. An eight-year-old would give you a break. But, but Josiah did some great things. I'm sure he had people handling it. And then Jeremiah, at the time he started prophesying, was 17. Folks, we got to get busy. So here Jesus is 12, and he's just asking questions, but they were, they were amazed. But then the next time we read about Jesus in, in John here is, or I'm sorry, in Luke, is in Luke chapter 3 is when he gets baptized in the river short. John 3, talking about John the Baptist. I must in, decrease that he might increase. Amen. Amen. And then he, he shows up, and then uh, I love it because um, the 
last thing that Isaac said to his father was, Daddy, where's the lamb? And about 2,000 years later, John the Baptist, the prophet, the first new covenant prophet, says, Behold, the lamb. Amen. You show that. Oh, Lord. You'll get that about three years. If I do any more, you'll shout in the bedroom. <laughs>
wrong. You know, Jesus called the devil the prince of this world. That's right. And he said, I pray for you, Peter. The devil wants to sit you as we go. I pray for you that your faith won't fail. Jesus did jump over. I'll take care of you. Peter, back up. No, he's given us the keys to the kingdom. And in Matthew 16, when, when Jesus was walking to the disciples, he said, Who do you say that I am? Or who do the people say? He said, Well, John the Baptist, Elijah, one of the prophets. He said, Well, who do you say that I am? He said, You're Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Whoa, he got revelation. He said, Upon this rock of revelation, this foundational truth, I'll build my church. You gotta have a foundation to build the church. You gotta have a foundation to build out. You gotta have a foundation. You don't see the foundation. We, he, he, this is a fine church. But without a foundation, there wouldn't be no church. So that's things we can't see the most important thing. He said, Upon this foundational truth, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He said, That ain't all, Peter. He threw him some keys. He said, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth is loose in heaven. Young people, you can walk in that school and buy that teacher. Come out. No, don't do that. <laughs> now, you know what I mean? If the teacher ain't buying, if you got problems in school, people bullying you, you say, in the name of Jesus, I'll buy that bullet. You're going to fall before and start choking. You get up and get saved. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, you can't do that if you ain't ever, you know, use your faith, but you don't grow in your faith. Yes, Lord. Use your faith. Somebody say amen. amen. Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. Uh, the Lord thy God, I worship and only him. And Jesus just kept saying, it is written. It is written. Folks, and the devil said that he left him for a more opportune time. If he left the devil, if he left Jesus, he said he's going to come back. He'll come back to you too. Amen. Right. The devil hates the word of God. That's why. If the devil hates the word of God, I want to read it more. Amen. amen. If he hates it, I want it. And once again, you ain't got to walk around with a bottle strapped to your forehead. But just look at every chance you get. Put a tape in. Listen to your preacher. Take notes. Get in the Word of God. I got a notepad here. It's down there. Every time I go to church, I'm writing. I'm taking notes. Everywhere I go, I'm taking notes. I'm, I'm listening. I'll go back and read over. Somebody say amen. Amen. Then Jesus returned to the power of Spirit in Galilee, and the news of him went through all the surrounding region. And when he called the synagogue and being glorified, and when he came to Nazareth, where he'd been brought up as his custom, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read, and he said, This book was handed to him by the prophet Isaiah. And when he opened the book, he found the place where it was written. And it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Now, I want you to understand something. It was just because he was Jesus, he had to be anointed, just like me and you. He was a man, anointed by the Holy Spirit. We are men and women anointed by the Holy Spirit. The same spirit to proclaim light liberty to the captives, to recover sight of the blind, to set liberty to those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable day of the Lord. In John 16, 7, I'm, I'm done. I got two more verses. In John 16, 7, it says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. How can it be to your advantage? How can it be to our advantage that you go away, Jesus? We, we left everything to follow you. Now you're going to leave? I, I've been one of them. I've been here. You know, I mean, you must be crazy. I need you to stay here. He said, no, if I don't leave, the Holy Spirit can't come. Right. And I'm going to tell you, it's to your advantage that the Holy Spirit comes in. Amen. Amen. Just like the indwelled things. I will send him to you, and then I'll know Acts 1, 8, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witness to me in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. And then the last verse is in Acts 2, 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them others. That was on the day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit fell on them. They all began to speak in other tongues. And they, listen, they, they got filled again and again. A couple of chapters over, it says they were filled with the Holy Spirit. I said, I thought we got filled in Acts 2 4. Well, folks, you know how you can get filled again? Because you leave. Come on, come on. You leave. You got to get filled up. The Bible says in Ephesians 5 18, and, uh, be constantly being, being filled. The Greek connotation is there, it's a continual process. Constantly be being filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, you, you, you go preach a service like this, and you'll go, man, I feel empty. I got to go fill back up. Amen. Mm -hmm. I've been praying in the Holy Ghost all afternoon. I like to wind that thing up. Yes, amen. 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 Right. And the Bible says, if you don't know how to praise, y'all pray in the Holy Ghost. I'll, I'll be about to pray for things I didn't even know. Somebody say amen. 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 You got to understand something. Right before the day of Pentecost, Peter denied Jesus three times. A little, a little girl said, you don't know what? And he cursed. This is a disciple of Christ. If the associate pastor got up here and cursed him, we'll come. We got to throw that fool. We got to curse. Peter cursed. And then he stands up on the day of Pentecost as he got through the Holy Spirit. And they said, these people are drunk. He goes, wait a minute. They ain't drunk. And then he starts preaching the gospel. 3,000 people got born again because of the 
Holy Spirit. Once again, it wasn't me that set up at that corner, at the class reunion. It was the anointing of God rising up. Yes, Lord. I started to raise up the people. Man, God stood. God yes. stood good. Yes. I, I, I wasn't a big picker. He just cursed me. He just said, I don't think God, let, let John do it. Don't let Peter do it. But that Peter got to say, he's the God of the second chance. Amen. 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 Now, I think about the Apostle Paul. He wrote three fourths of the New Testament, and that guy was standing there with Stephen. He was considering Stephen's death. Kill him, kill him. Right. Get here, take some more rocks. Now, I'm telling you, when that light hit, he saw it. That's that same light he saw when he was going to Damascus. Right. Oh, my Jesus. Well, I think I recognize that. I don't know if Jesus helped me. And he said Jesus. Man, and, and then it was on. And that boy was preaching a shame. Killing Christians. Hey. He went from killing Christians right to three portions of the I probably wouldn't have picked Paul either because he did a pretty good job. Amen. 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 Right. Look, folks, thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Now, this is a Holy Ghost church. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes, it is. Yeah. It's a Holy Ghost church. Amen. 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 Oh, there's a man coming up here. I'm going to play some more. This comes strong, so I'm going to play some. I was in a service in, uh, in Uly, Florida here a couple weeks ago. It was Pentecost Sunday. Was that like three weeks ago? I think. There's a woman that came up to the pulpit, came up to the prayer. She said, I've been seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit for 40 years. I said, this is about as good a time as any. This time you get filled with the Holy Spirit, Pentecost Sunday. And that woman went calling and calling. I thought she was going to run laps around the church about four Who's outside? They had an outdoor service. And she just went, wow, man. I said, I thought 40 years? I've heard stories like that, but I, that's a long time to be sick, ain't it? Yeah. Oh. And then last, I think it was about two Sundays ago, I was in service. And I had this guy, I was picking up, he was, he was at Greenleaf. I was Greenleaf. I was, they had an outpatient program, and I didn't even know anything about it. But a pastor friend of mine in Missouri called me and said, Here's just a show, man, he's staying in Valdosta. He's sitting there. He's got anger issues. He hates that. There's this mute group on. Would you pick him? I said, Absolutely. I'm used to picking up kids. I was a kid. I brought him up there. And I said, You ever been to a Holy Ghost? He goes, I don't think so. I said, No, you yeah. haven't. And uh, so, so uh, I, he's sitting on the front there, and then they, the, the pastor had us come forward and and had people come out. This guy came out to me and he said, I just need prayer for boldness. And I said, are you born again? He said, oh, Jesus Christ is my Lord. And I said, have you ever been through the Holy Ghost? He said, no, oh, sir, I have. I said, would you like me? He said, yes, sir. I explained to him, you shall see power. Boldness. Man, I'm telling you, brother, I lay hands on him. And I, 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 I know it wasn't me. But I prayed for me. That's right. That's right. That's right. That guy was talking to me. Oh, 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 She laid hands on him. I'm like, 
you know, and then the more I did, the more fluent I got, and then I started playing. And then I, 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 a couple times, I, then the, you know, I always ask people, how many, how many of you in this room pray in the other side? Pray the same. See, that's the problem. Amen. I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to offend anybody, but I, I, I find this in a lot, of, a lot of spiritual churches. They just don't talk about it enough. We, we believe it. But I'm telling you, the Bible says you shall seek power right. when the Holy Ghost and they spoke in tongues. The, the Apostle Paul said, I don't know how so many churches that don't believe it. They say, they say, oh, we, we, don't, we don't believe it. I said, well, the Apostle Paul said, I thank my God I speak in tongues yeah. more than all of it. Yeah. And if you go back to read Corinthians, there was some tongue talking fool. They were talking in tongues like the Greeks were trying to preach. They was out of here to go to Corinth. Well, he, I've never, ever, Brother Cross, ever heard a pastor stand up in a pulpit and say, I thank my God I speak in tongues more than all of you. Never heard. I'm the, uh, Paul was a tongue talking, get up talking in tongues, went to bed talking in tongues, woke up in the middle of the night talking in tongues. I just got a hold of some messages by this couple that were Minnesota. They weren't in the ministry. They were in the ministry. They just served their local church. And they asked God, we want to be used by you, God. We want to be intercessors. And this man started praying, and the Lord started showing him things and started praying through him because he made himself a bad know that he was loved. Ezekiel said, I, I searched for a man that was standing in the gap, but I couldn't find him. God I couldn't find anybody. I couldn't find anybody. God find me. I want to, I'll be your intercessor. I'll pray. Or I'll get up at 3.30 in the morning. She said that he'd wake up, he'd call out names. They didn't even know who they were. It was a missionary somewhere in, in uh, I think it was in, uh, I think it was in India. And he said, I, I, he was praying for me. He was calling his name. A few weeks later, they were at a church, and they had a bulletin. And he said, he pulled it. He goes, that's the man's name. That's the man's name in the bulletin right here. So they went to one of the ladies and they said, who is this man? She goes, that's, that's that lady over there. That's her, her son. He's a missionary in India, but he just died. She goes, I've been calling out his name. I've been speaking out for you. She goes, well, the wife won't let him bury the body. She's believing God. She's holding on. She's holding on. God said, I can just find one person to hold on. And then he found his intercessor in Minnesota. The guy came back to life. He lived out his life. He kept doing the mission work. So he said, I think he was dead three or four days. She wouldn't let them bury him. Well, that must be faith. What you need to say in your heart? That the You know what I mean? So faith was released, and God had hold of that. I tell you, I want young people. I like what you're saying to me. We've got to get young people to get a hold of some of this stuff. Amen. I don't know it all, but I know God wants to do something. Yes, we, we, there is a greater way to come. And I'm telling you what, this church ain't going to be big enough. Yeah. You got to knock some walls out. I know you probably don't want to do that. It's a nice wall. But you can do it. Whatever we, got, we can go that way, I think. We can do that. Just, you got to take a road out here in front. But I'm going to tell you, folks, we are in for the great awakening. After this whole yes, show, this thing's lifted, people are hungry. They're hungry. Yeah. I'm seeing people leaving some of these dead churches. Yeah. And that, that, we had people come to our church. We had a doctor just come to our church. He said, I'm sick of fear. Fear has just stripped out the whole community. He goes, I want some of that Holy Ghost power. He was sick of this when my pastor mentioned it's on mine. They can't. They all, they, we had a girl come in and she was talking about how many of you feel the Holy Ghost? He was, he ran down from it. Never spoke in tongues in his life. She laid hands on him. He thought somebody had been speaking in tongues for 45 years. I'm telling you. I want everybody to stand up on your feet. First of all, the, the, the prerequisite to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you must be born again. Amen. And that's the most important thing. Amen. Because once you plant the tomato seed, you need to throw some fertilizer on after you water a little bit. That's what I like. I call them, the Holy Ghost is like 10, 10, 10, baby. He needs some fertilizer. He needs some fertilizer. Amen. 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 So if you've never been filled with the Holy Ghost, first of all, if you've never been born again, if you've never made Jesus Christ for you, I always do this now. I'm just going to do it. But we get to these events, and you got people, they take the same when they be going to church. 